Hello, my name is Hannah Brown and I'm a senior research executive on the Ipsos Multiple Sclerosis Therapy Monitor team. Today I'm going to give a summary of our recently published paper, Physician and Patient Treatment Decision Making Among Relapsing Remitting Multiple Sclerosis Patients in the E5 and the USA. The objective was to obtain insight into patient engagement and treatment drivers as a patient progresses through lines of therapy, a field where little is currently known. Data were abstracted from the Ipsos Multiple Sclerosis Therapy Monitor, a biannual online chart review study of multiple sclerosis patients in the E5 and the US since 1997. Data were taken from the September through to December period from 2015 to 2017. The study identified three key practice points. Firstly, decisions were largely jointly made between physicians and patients across both the E5 and the US. Patients were typically more engaged earlier in the treatment pathway, with this decreasing as they progressed through lines of therapy. And decisions remain efficacy focused, with this driven by the ability of a disease modifying therapy to reduce relapse rate. The therapeutic landscape for relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis has evolved rapidly over the past 15 years as an expansion in treatment options has reshaped the clinical approach to therapy. A growing number of disease modifying therapies has brought with it a rise in expectation for both physicians and patients. Historically, efficacy, the ability of a disease-modifying therapy to reduce relapse rate or slow disability progression, primarily drove disease-modifying therapy selection. However, the longevity and variable disease course of multiple sclerosis demands for a treatment with the additional factors of safety and convenience, as quality of life becomes an increasingly prevalent endpoint. In a preference-sensitive condition, such as relapsing and remitting multiple sclerosis, such availability in treatment options allows for decisions to be made jointly between physicians and patients, as patient-centred goals and risks shape the therapeutic approach. The Ipsos Global Multiple Sclerosis Therapy Monitor is a multi-centre, multi-year, online chart review study of multiple sclerosis patients in the EU5 and the US since 1997. Approximately 370 physicians, so that's 270 in the E5 and 100 in the US, provided de-identified retrospective data on the next 10 consecutive multiple sclerosis patients that they saw for a treatment consultation. Collected data elements included patient demographics, clinical status, diagnosis and treatment patterns, and disability status. Relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis patients currently treated with a disease-modifying therapy were evaluated in this study. During the study observation period, physicians recorded patient data on the next 10 consecutive multiple sclerosis patients they saw for a treatment consultation in the following ratio. Seven patients with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, one patient with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, one patient with primary progressive multiple sclerosis, and one patient with clinically isolated syndrome. Physicians recorded the patient data online with the assistance of a set of questions referred to in the study as a patient record form. Physicians were randomly recruited from a large panel to enable geographic representativeness. The following screening criteria was also applied. Physicians had to see at least 15 MS patients a month and write at least one prescription for a disease-modifying therapy a month. They also had to be responsible for the long-term treatment decisions and management of their multiple sclerosis patients and have specialised in the field of multiple sclerosis for a minimum of three years. 70% retention of physicians was obtained between waves, but the patient data was newly recorded each time, and therefore the data is not longitudinal. This high physician retention allows for a robust view of trends over time, but there is some variation between participants, and the patient data evaluated provides a cross-sectional review of their practices at the given time window. Descriptive statistical methods were utilised to analyse the data corresponding to the factors involved in treatment decision making in relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis patients in the E5 and the US over time. Focusing initially on figure one, which shows the primary reason for choice of current disease modifying therapy among relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis patients between the E5 and the US over time. In total from the 2015 to 2017 time period, treatment decisions among relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis patients were predominantly based on efficacy for relapses as the primary treatment driver in both the EU5 and the USA. Other major considerations in Q4 2017 included slow progress of disability, efficacy in early MS, 
best benefit to risk profile and oral administration. There was some variation between regions, with SOS progress of disability experiencing significant growth in the USA between Q4 2016 and Q4 2017, positioning as a more frequent driver than in the EU5. This highlights a potential shift in focus towards more long-term treatment goals in the therapeutic approach for relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis patients in the USA. Convenience-related factors other than oral administration were uncommon. When considering primary reason for choice by line of therapy, as per figure 2, across both regions efficacy factors were more frequently cited at later lines of treatment compared with first line. Although treatment decisions were largely efficacy focused, where convenience factors such as oral administration were cited as treatment drivers, this was more likely to occur earlier in the treatment pathway. Both regions experienced a decline in convenience related drivers in favour of efficacy towards later lines of therapy. Figure 3 shows physician and patient influence on treatment decisions in relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis patients in the EU5 and US by line of therapy and disease severity. For both the EU5 and USA and across all lines of therapy, treatment choices were most likely to be jointly made between physicians and patients. While the choice of DMT at all lines remains predominantly the consequence of a joint decision, patient involvement decreases towards later lines of treatment. By third line, 6.5% of treatment decisions in the EU5 and 12.4% in the USA were the choice of the patient in comparison to 9 and 17.5% at first line. Physician-led treatment decisions were of a higher prevalence in the EU5, whilst the USA saw greater patient engagement at all lines of therapy, with engagement at first line outweighing the influence of a physician alone. A similar pattern was evident across disease severity, so mild, moderate and severe. The majority of treatment choices were jointly made. In comparison to the EU5, USA treatment choices were less likely to be solely physician-led. However, for the most severe patients, physician influence is high, 36.4% and 38.2% in the EU5 and the USA respectively, with minimal patient-only decision-making in both regions, 3.9 and 5.9%. The results showed that treatment decisions remained similar across both the EU5 and the USA. Both were largely efficacy focused, although the convenience of an oral treatment was also an important factor in the market. Relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis patients are engaged in their treatment decisions, particularly early in the pathway, with the majority of treatment decisions being made jointly between both physicians and patients. There's currently little evidence into patient engagement among relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis patients as they progress through lines of therapy, and hence this study is the first of its kind. The benefits of patient involvement in treatment decision making has been highlighted in several studies. Patient engagement, in conjunction with open dialogue with physicians around treatment options, has shown to have a substantial influence on a patient's satisfaction with the disease-modifying therapy. Additionally, with the therapeutic options for multiple sclerosis being disease modifying as opposed to curative, patient involvement in these critical interactions has shown to be essential for optimal adherence and persistence on therapy. As the multiple sclerosis therapeutic market grows and newer treatment options become available, additional studies to supplement the evidence from this study cohort in which efficacy remains paramount as a treatment driver of choice are vital. Whilst efficacy for relapses dominates among patients in this study as a primary treatment driver, additional influences such as benefit versus risk continue to persist, as the growing adoption of riskier therapies does accompany somewhat of a trade-off between the two. With the market competition in multiple sclerosis likely to become increasingly intensified in forthcoming years, the requirement for a therapy with maximum efficacy and minimum risk is ever-present.